Look, I came across some video footage this week, which I found quite surprising and in some ways a little confronting. Do you remember Milo Yiannopoulos? He was once considered one of the most dangerous men in the Western world. A gay libertarian, Donald Trump loving showman, a speaker and a writer who loved to provoke, often by saying things actually more true than his enemies cared to admit. What feminism has become since it's run out of things to complain about is a mean, vindictive, sociopathic, man-hating movement of a couple of people in the elite and not very many, much of the public. I mean, this is a perfect example of what I talk about in my shows. You'd be hard-pressed to find a journalist who does not describe themselves as a feminist these days. But it's very difficult to find any normal woman who does. Now, it's true that Milo at times crossed lines uh, too desperate for attention. In fact, I told him that to his face when I shared uh, a stage with him. I called him out for being too mean. Less would often have been more. But back then, I did support Milo's right to speak because what I really could not stand were the mobs, the journalists, the politicians, the activists who decided Milo had to be shut down, had to be shut up, had to be banned and lied about and even bullied into silence. His audiences intimidated just because he spoke things they did not want to hear. Milo praised Trump. Shocking. He mocked race politics and identity politics uh, and saying that he was a gay man with a black husband, part Jewish as well, that didn't seem to give him the license from the left that you might have hoped. Just made them angrier. In fact, leftists in California were so angry with him that they smashed and set fire to a university where Milo was speaking. Now, leftists in Australia attacked people in Melbourne wanting to hear Milo speak and threw stones at the police as well. And the Morrison government, weak and cowardly, gave in and banned Milo from doing another tour here, despite his pleas for debate. What I'm interested in is an open marketplace of ideas, uh, you know, a, a fair, open, uh, uh, you know, system where everybody can express themselves without fear of censure, without fear of professional disaster or social, you know, uh, peril, just because they cracked the wrong joke on Twitter. In the end, of course, the left won. Milo lost the book deal, he was banned too often from all sorts of platforms and basically disappeared. And I wondered now and then what became of Milo because he was still only 37. But a couple of days ago I found out it's an amazing transformation. This man, too dangerous to let into Australia, is now a Christian, he says, who's given up homosexual sex and sells Christian icons, although the woman sitting next to him still seemed a little alarmed by what he could do next. If you're thinking about how this is going to fit into your uh, shrine or maybe even a bedside table, I know sometimes people like to wake up and say good morning to their favorite yes. uh, you know, people and saints and whatnot. Um, it's available in bronze and pewter, and they're both eighty-seven fifty. We don't, we're not yet set up for two easy payments, despite our... Not uh, yet. We're not quite there. <laughs> but we're, we're hoping to offer that one day, or two easy payments. <laughs> but she's, she's just under 12 inches tall. She's available in those two different, um, they call them accent finishes. We've got right. statues in, in the shop here that are um, fully painted. Right. And we'll see some Colour. of those later. Yes. I spoke earlier to Mark Latham, a former federal Labour leader and now One Nation leader in the New South Wales Parliament, and I asked him what he thought about Milo after seeing him now. Well, is he so dangerous that he's still banned from Australia? Because uh, Milo Yiannopoulos is now uh, saying he's anti-gay, he's um, selling religious icons on uh, TV. It looks like it's cable TV there, and I've watched the clip of him selling the icons. It's hilarious. He's not got the same flamboyance, and the woman next to him doesn't really know what to make of it. Um, so I can't believe that Milo is still banned from Australia. Uh, we've got religious freedom bill being moved in Canberra. Surely he qualifies under that. He can come out here and have a travelling road show to sell his uh, religious statues. I'd sign up to watch him because when he was in Australia oh, four or five years ago, like you, Andrew, I hosted uh, his, his program, his show, our one in Sydney, and he was absolutely hilarious. I've never laughed so much in an hour of someone talking about politics, poking fun at everything. And uh, some of it was a little bit rough, but if you're not, if you're not a snowflake and you don't melt to pieces. He's a very entertaining man and it's funny to see where he's at at the moment but it also just highlights how silly these uh, immigration bans are 
on someone like Milo Yiannopoulos. I'm sure Christina Keneally will be wanting to ban him in the future, even though she's religious. And all he's doing these days is selling these religious icons. Now, Mark, I don't want to cast any doubt on uh, Milo Yiannopoulos' religious conversion. For all I know, it's uh, absolutely heartfelt and genuine, although typical Milo, he uh, once again goes too far. I think it might be a joke, I don't know, uh, that he's uh, thinking of doing gay conversion therapy for people, which, yeah, look, wrong, but should it really matter? But in the end, the left did win, didn't it? They drove him off the stage. Well, I suppose so to some extent. Um, you never really know what to make of Milo. And as you say, it's hard to know which of his statements are serious and other statements that are uh, designed to provoke outrage and uh, hysteria. Uh, he's a real provocateur, there's no doubt about that. Um, if he wants to sell religious icons, if that's where he's at, I've got fond memories of his visit here in Australia. I think he's a wonderfully entertaining person. And I watched his show and reached the conclusion it really wasn't about politics. It was about entertainment. And he's much more than a, a, a political uh, dogmatist, someone out there with an ideological point of view. He's an entertainer. And the world hasn't got enough entertainers who make you laugh. That's my point of view. And if that's what cancel culture is all about, squashing entertainers who make us laugh, then I suppose they have one. And I thought it was really so shameful the Morrison government to uh, deny him a, a visa. Gee, they were weak at the start, and I'm not sure how much better they are now on these issues.